If something isn't perfect, he says, he has to learn to just calm down. Vikram Vidge is the quintessential chef, sommelier, restaurateur, entrepreneur who doesn't take reservations at his establishments, but he pulls out all the tricks to keep you happy until your curry, chickpeas, or lamb popsicles are served. When he roams the floor, he brings you a cold Indian beer, perhaps, and treats you like family. If you're not South Asian, he makes sure you know which sauce and which condiment make you appear Indian. He has wife Meru Dawala and their team push the limits of Indian cuisine every day. It is my pleasure to welcome Vikram Vij to the studio. Apparently he became a chef to please his scotch drinking grandfather. Well, namaste. Namaste. The scotch drinking grandfather. You know the funniest thing is that he, when I was growing up in India, he would see me cook in the kitchen and I would put something together. Even if it was a simple omelette or an egg. And he would be drinking his scotch, you know, and listening to some music in, on the verandas of Amritsar. And he would say to me, you like to cook and I like to drink. We should open up a restaurant together and I will like to be a bartender in your <laughs> restaurant. And that's, that's what the image that I had in my head was that I need to open up a restaurant. So the restaurant Vidges has nothing to do with Vikram Vij. It has to do with him. It's in his honor. Mm. that I became a chef and I wanted to, uh, you know, open up a restaurant so that he could be the bartender. I mean, he never lived to, to be that part, but he knew that I was on my way to become a culinary chef uh, in Austria. Intuitive grandpa. Uh, what kind of scotch did he drink? <clears throat> Johnny Walker, red, elementary, something that all he needed was that little buzz at the end of the day. It was, he was not a connoisseur of it. He just enjoyed that. He loved music. He loved little things that I would make for him. And that was just the end. No different than anybody else coming and saying, I love a great martini, or I love a nice mm -hmm. glass of wine. That's exactly what he was. And what part of you is like him? Uh, very similar. Uh, I like to spend more money than I actually have ever earned. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to... Me too. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I like to have a good time. I also love to go to a room, and if there's nobody talking, I want, within an hour, I'll have everybody talking and partying. I don't walk into the room and don't go into the corner. I go into the room and stand right smack in the middle and say, guys, come on, let's go, let's talk, what the hell? And that's what has reflected even at Vidges. People say to me, you're a little bit in my face sometimes, and I say, no, I'm not in your face. I'm here to make sure that you're gonna have a damn good time at my restaurant. Mm. And yet you don't seem to single uh, the stars out, the celebrities out. You treat everybody the same, they say. Yes. You know, Gandhi said, we are all equal. Mm. At the end of the day, we are all equal. Whether you're a star, a celebrity, a food writer, or a nurse, or a teacher, you should be equally treated with love and respect. So when you come to the restaurant, you get a cup of tea, and something nice and warm that comes out of the kitchen. And Indian hospitality, that should be part of everybody's life. And people who know your restaurant know that you come without a reservation. You can't make a reservation. It doesn't matter who you are or how many you are. Correct. Well, because it was, it was about equality. It was about making sure that people understood that you come, you hang out, you have a glass of wine, you chill out. You know, when my father comes, he waits like everybody else does. <laughs> The reason is because he also wants to understand that why are people waiting? And he'll criticize, he'll say this is not right, that is not right, but that's okay. He, we, we are here to enjoy. Eating out should not be just that you go out, you eat and you leave. Eating out should be a part of mm -hmm. enjoyment, mm -hmm. putting something home together. And in the restaurant. And I know you <clears> are a big family man. You believe in family dinner and sometimes have time for family dinner or try to make time for family dinner. Your house, you have, you're running around, you're six. Where are you? Uh, six in the evening? No, six years old. Oh. Maybe you're five. Sorry. Born in Amritsar? Born in Amritsar. Uh, brought up in New Delhi and Bombay and went to Austria in 1994. Okay. No, 1984, sorry. 84, that yes. was to cooking school. To the cooking school in Austria. Remembering what grandfather told you. Yes. Off to cooking school, <clears throat> but before that. Yes. Were you a clown in school? Were you the perfect student? No, I was not. I was like the worst. I barely passed. I barely passed my exams. I did my chemistry, my BSc in chemistry, uh -huh. 
only because I actually bribed all the people who were taking attendance because I never actually went to school. And what I would do is this. All year round, I would never study goof off. The last one month before the exams were there, I would just learn everything by heart, close my eyes. I never understood it. I just knew the formula and I would just write the exam and I passed. But guess what that brought me? That brought me to the point where now when somebody comes into the restaurant and I know where they were sitting and what they ordered, I remember it like that. And I'll go to them and say, hey, you had lamp popsicles last time. And they'll be like, how do you remember? I'll be like, just because that's the memory that I have. So it's funny, at that time, it was so negative because I had just studied, uh, you know, by learning by heart. Sure. But now I, I was able to imply that on my daily basis. So at the restaurant, I can tell you exactly who sat where, what they ordered, and when they came in last time. Which is very important because we all know the young waiter who says, and the special today is yes. chicken. Yes, exactly. And the sauce of special sauce. Uh, yeah, and that's like, you can't even remember a special. If you can't remember a special, how are you going to give, pay attention to my detail of what I really want? Exactly. Female influences uh, when you grew up. Uh, your mom, your grandmother, your neighbor. Huge. Uh, aunt. Every aunt every grandmother, like my grandmother was one of those people who fussed over me. She, as soon as I woke up, she was like, what are you gonna have for breakfast? I was like, okay, this is what I'm gonna have for breakfast. As soon as, literally, as soon as the breakfast finished and I put my plate away, she said, what are you gonna have for lunch? I'm like, I just finished breakfast. I can't even think of having lunch. <laughs> and then as soon as lunch was finished, then it was the afternoon snack. My mother was the same way. Came home, fresh juices. My mom had a huge influence on me. But her influence was more like she quietly cooked food mm. the way she wanted to Like cook. a Jewish mama. Like a Jewish mama. But she I know you didn't have a Jewish mama. No, I had an Indian mama, and my Indian mama cooked delicious, simple food. Her food was so simple that sometimes I would say, you have like literally nothing in your hand. You don't really put any spices in there. Whereas when I would, I would go to some friend's house and everything else, their parents were cooking with lots of spices and everything else. Now, after all these years, the nuances of her style of roasting the cumin and the cloves and the way she put the spices in comes back to my palate. And I remember, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's the reason why she didn't do it, because there was this happening with the dishes and all that stuff. So huge influences. Grandparents, you know, have a huge influence on this. Um, aunts, uncles. In India, everybody lives to, literally everybody lives to eat. Like, you know, when you grow up, you're just like, okay, what are you going to have for breakfast? What are you going to have for lunch? It's just, it's, that's your cycle. You go to the market, you buy everything, you bring it back. We don't have refrigerations. I mean, now we do, obviously. Yes. I'm talking about when I was growing up, not huge refrigeration. So you literally had to buy fresh stuff. If you needed four potatoes, you would go downstairs and say, I need some four potatoes, and you would bring them up. And sure. you would buy. Or go to the garden. Or go to the garden. Depending on where you Depending live. on where you are. Mm -hmm. So, off to Austria, he does go to culinary school. Why Austria? Salzburg? Austrian school at that time was the best cooking school available. I also tried to get into the, the French Lausanne school, mm. but they needed a huge amount of French that I needed to learn. Whereas the Austrian school was like, you know what? As long as you're good and you're happy and you're willing to learn and you show us that you're willing to learn, you're going to take the, you know, the ESL of, of German, right. we will we'll give you um, admission. I was like, okay. That was like my little passport to leave India. I was like, yeah, I'm finally leaving this country because I was just like done with India. I had been there for 19 years. I wanted to do something new. I was like, you know, I, my blood was boiling, my hormones were going crazy. I escaped <laughs> from India. I needed an escape. And um, and that's what I did. I mean, Austria was the, the first place that kind of accepted me. And uh, when I got there, I was like, I didn't even speak a word of German at the time. So guess what I did? The first thing I did, I got myself a German girlfriend. Of course. Das ist uh, sehr gut. Das ist sehr gut. Ja. And it went really well because you would be just able you had to only converse in German with each other. <laughs> she didn't speak much of English, I didn't speak much of German. And my German was like this, within th six months I was able to say everything I wanted to do and express myself however I wanted. It was awesome. Ich liebe dich. 
I didn't go that far. That rub, that rub in, I love you. Yeah. Not, not the one. Not no. Not the special one. No, that was more of a um, way, of the stepping way of saying, okay, well, let you learn a little bit of English, right. and I'll learn a little bit of German. It was like an osmosis. Well, and as a girl goes, you're a great language instructor, <laughs> but you're not going to be the wife. Yes. No. So, uh, in that school, what did you learn? Well, you did one year of front of the house, one year of the back of the house, and then the third year you had to choose. So I chose to be in the kitchen uh, that year, and so you become a chef. You become a restaurateur as well because you, you, it gives you a certification of that now you can go and do whichever field in the restaurant industry. Somebody wants to go to HR, somebody right. wants to go to the back of the house, housekeeping, they, ch they, they help you choose. It's almost like saying, I am now a GP. You know, a general right. practice. You, beca you yeah. become a doctor. After that, if you want to specialize in one medicine, you can go for it. Yes. I went into the kitchen side. I get it. And you, and you don't want a GP operating on your brain. No. So you have to do the math. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Canada. When did it call you? How did you get here? Why did we take you? <laughs> it was a very um, heart-wrenching experience. I had never wanted to come to Canada. I couldn't believe I thought everybody here ate hamburgers and drank beer. Like, I'm, and I was in Austria. I was like, you know, this prim and proper, you add a little bit of this, and you have a glass of champagne before you start your appetizer, and then you have a little glass of Riesling with your, you know, uh, with your appetizers, and then you have a nice Bordeaux with your red. So I was all, like, fussy into this. At the age of 22, I belonged to a pipe club where we would smoke pipe and actually analyze tobacco. And Not say, corn cob pipe. Oh no! no just like beautiful old Austrian style pipes. I used to like smoke pipe and say, "Oh yeah, this tobacco has a little bit of extra whiskey in it, and yeah. this is smoke." Like this is how sophisticated I thought I was. So I'm in Austria. I'm cooking at this place, and a general manager of a Bam Springs hotel called Ivor Petrak is having dinner. Yes. He's having dinner. He liked a little spice. I had heard that he was, you know, from uh, Czechoslovakia, and he liked a little bit of spice. So I made something that was a little bit spicy. He called over and says, hey, you know, who, who are you? And I said, oh, I'm Vikram from India, and I like to cook. And he says, oh, you speak German? And I said, yeah, I speak German fluently. And English? I said, yeah, you know, English is good, but not that great, but it's okay. And so he said, okay, uh, you know, guys like you should come to this country, uh, come to Canada. I'm like, whatever. Like, you know, you take a business card, you put it away. But I just, out of fun sake, I don't know why, I applied to him after two weeks. I said, I'm going to apply. Six weeks later, I get a little envelope with a one-way ticket and a visa for six months to come to Bam Springs Hotel. And I'm like, okay, he's done his job by sending me a one-way ticket. How smart was he? Mm -hmm. He knew that as soon as somebody would land into Banff, he would fall in love with the country. There's no reason you would want to go back. And like Louise and the Canadian Rockies and Jasper. I mean, and all gorgeous. That. Yeah, and also from a professional the point of fields. view. Yeah, but not only just the beauty, but from a professional point of view, this was the country mm -hmm. that he knew was going to give me the roots that I'd been looking for to dig in, and he totally, in his heart of heart, knew well, that I belonged here. Because it grabbed his heart. Yes. He knew it would grab yours. Exactly. And the rest is culinary history. We have to take a break. Uh, Vikram Vij, our guest, will return.